Are you looking to upgrade the audio system and the functionality on your Harley Davidson Street Glide? Note Cycles has the perfect head unit for you. The new Soundstream Reserve HDHU.14SI unlocks technology that you've never had before right at your fingertips on your Harley Davidson motorcycle. The seven inch capacitive touchscreen gives you the full functionality of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Your favorite navigation app such as Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze. You also have the ability to view real time diagnostics on the gauges screen, such as battery voltage, RPM, intake temperatures, and even the twist grip percentage. Also available in the vehicle information screen is a readout of your TPMS system, as well as a check engine light. Without any further delay, let's go ahead and disassemble this bike so we can get our new head unit installed. So the first thing that we're gonna do is on the sides of the inner fairing, there are two screws that we're going to remove. For this, we're gonna be using a T27 Torx. One thing to take note when you remove these two screws, you're gonna have a shorter and a longer one. The shorter one goes down here on the bottom and the longer one will go up top. So just remember that when we go to reassemble. Easiest thing to do is go ahead and turn the handlebars the opposite direction and we're gonna remove the same two screws on the left-hand side of the bike. All right, now we're gonna move around to the front of the bike, but before we go any further, I'm gonna grab a moving blanket and we're gonna go ahead and protect the front fender. We don't want anything to fall off or any screws to hit it and damage this lovely paint. All right, now that that's protected, we have three screws across the top of the fairing that are gonna hold the fairing and the windshield in. So we're gonna use our same T27 Torx to remove these three. My suggestion is to start with the outer two and leave the center one to hold everything on until we're completely ready to remove the outer fairing. Go ahead and remove these. The center one, we're gonna loosen it, but we're not gonna take it all the way out. Go ahead and pull the windshield out of the way. We'll set this to the side. Now we only have this one screw holding it on, so we'll go ahead and get ready to remove the outer fairing. Again, just like the screws on the side, the three screws across the top, you do have two short and a long. The long one goes right in the middle, but we'll show that again when we go and reassemble the bike. Position ourselves so that we can pull the outer fairing off. Very gently work it up and around the headlights. Now that we have the outer fairing free of the rest of the bike, the only thing we have left to do is unplug the headlight. So on this bike, just pull the tab, gently wiggle that out. Now that we have the headlight plug free and the outer fairing is off, we'll go ahead and set this to the side. Continuing on, the next piece we're gonna take off is this top vent. So if we look to the side, there's a screw on each side and then we'll be able to pull this piece out. Again, using our T27 Torx and then this vent if you just pull it straight towards you, it'll come right out. My suggestion whenever you're taking these parts off is to always set them either on a bench or on toolbox or on a blanket, put them all together so that way you know which screws go to which pieces when we go to put the bike back together. Next step in the process is we're gonna start freeing up a lot of the plugs and the cables here to get access to this mounting plate. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a small flathead screwdriver and you're gonna see there's a connector right here on the back of the gauges. Just very carefully pry the sides, give it a little bit of tension. And go ahead and disconnect that. We're gonna grab a pry tool. We can go ahead and pull these connectors out. Just held in with the little plastic pieces there. Go ahead and start pulling stuff out of the way. The antenna, you can go ahead and pop it off. Most of the times it's held on with some double-sided tape. Next, we're gonna remove, you got the main harness, the USB, the AM, FM, and the factory GPS. GPS, the AM, FM, and the USB all have little tabs that we need to depress. 
We can pull those out of the way. And then the last one is the main harness. Right here on the top is a tab. We're gonna push that down. And then this whole part actually rocks to the side. Here, click, and it's gonna release the main harness. Next step in the process is we're gonna remove this mounting plate. To do that, there's seven screws in total. The first one is right here next to the back of the cubby where you see this cord comes out. There's one hidden under there. There's two on the, each side, and then there are two here in the back that also help hold the gauges on. To remove the two screws from each side of the mounting plate, you're gonna need a 5 30 seconds hex bit. For the three screws, there's one on either side of the gauges, and for the one here underneath, you're gonna need a T20 Torx bit. Four more screws on top of the mounting plate to remove here. You can see them, two on each side. Again, T20 Torx. At this point, we have all of the screws removed to get this mounting plate off. So if you just grab it from each side, you can pull it straight back towards you. Might have to work the cables out of the way. Whole mounting plate comes out as one piece. Gonna remove one screw here in the middle from the top of the gauges. That's all that's left holding that in. Trim rings might come out, but those just fit right in there. Last step to get our factory head unit out is the removal of these four bolts. There's one on each corner. We're gonna use a 3 16 hex on a ratchet to go ahead and break these loose. With these last four bolts loosened up, we can go ahead and lift up and pull the whole radio assembly right out of the bike. Go ahead and take these bolts all the way out as we will need those to install the new radio here in just a minute. Just wanna show you guys a little quick comparison of the factory unit as compared to the new Soundstream unit. You can see that they really put a lot of time and attention into, it almost looks exact same as the factory unit. Obviously this one has a lot more capabilities, but your mounting structures, even your plugs on the back, everything is gonna fit perfectly. So this is gonna be a direct drop in and we're gonna put it all back together. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now for the great part, we get to put in our new Soundstream unit. So we're just gonna reverse the steps that we did to disassemble the bike. So first step in the installation and reassembly is we're gonna put the new head unit in. Again, this just drops in and we're gonna push it all the way up towards the front. And you'll see that the four bolts that we just removed to take out the old head unit, we're gonna put right back in its place. All right, my tip on this when we reinstall this is go ahead and push it all the way up flush with the inner fairing. We're gonna put these in hand tight, then we'll hook everything up. We'll check for functionality and then we'll button everything up. Included in your box when you receive your new bundle is gonna be a wiring harness and the Maestro RR module. This module here is the brains that makes this whole thing work. It integrates all of your hand controls, gives you all of your factory functionality and communicates all of that between the new Soundstream unit and your Street Glide. When you receive this from us, we will already have it programmed with your motorcycle's information based on the year and model that you provided to us during checkout. So there's not gonna be any flashing or updating of the vehicle information needed prior to install. This will be plugged in, ready to go. So to do that, see we have the same Harley factory connections on this harness. So the factory harness here, we're going to plug into the back of the sound stream. The rocker switch gets pulled to the top dead center position. You hear it click into place. And then the other end the female end here will match up with the factory plug from your bike. Again, put it in, line up the little tab, move it to the top dead center, and you hear it click into place. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and connect our USB and our AM FM radio antennas. The USB port on this has a black connector and is gonna plug in directly next to the main harness. So work that around until we get it into place. And with that little click, you hear it's locked into place. Here is our AM FM antenna. It's got the white off-white plug on it. 
We're going to work that around to the back of the radio. And it is going to get plugged in right here. You have the main factory, the USB, and then the AM FM antenna. All right, a couple more things to note on your harness that you receive from us. It does have this extra blue wire. This is not needed in all installations. If you have an aftermarket amplifier, this may be needed. This would be your remote turn on wire, but for this particular install, we're not gonna need to hook that up. Also included in your bundle in a separate bag is gonna be the microphone. If you choose to mount this to your bike, all you need to do is plug in the headphone jack to the black headphone cord here. And then the microphone comes with a pedestal mount as well as a C-clip mount uh, that you can mount to wherever you like on your bike. We always recommend trying to go right kind of behind where the windshield would be. Uh, this is gonna give you the ability to talk, use your voice commands, uh, any of those functions of either your Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto. So for the, this installation, we're not gonna install that, but you can absolutely do that on your bike if you choose. Now that we have all of the connections made for the radio itself, before we go any further with putting the bike back together, we're gonna go ahead and power the radio on, make sure that all of our functionality is there, and then we'll go ahead and button the rest of the bike back up. We'll go ahead and put the bike into accessory power. You see that the screen lights up. There's the lovely Soundstream Reserve logo. All right, a couple of initial settings that we need to do before we check functionality. Uh, the first is picking your language preference. Uh, we're here in Frederick, Maryland in the United States. So we're gonna say English. And then we're also gonna say America. Press the check mark. Go ahead and turn down the static here. You can see the handlebar controls already work. We'll go ahead and find a great local radio station all right. All right, handlebar controls, volume up, volume down. If we press in the home, it's gonna cycle through the sources. That all seems to be working. All right, now that we've confirmed that everything powers up and works as it should, let's go ahead and finish up this install. Like I said, just a second ago, we're just gonna reverse the steps. So first thing we're gonna do is put the gauges back into place. Go ahead and line those up using this top screw. Go ahead and plug in the connector. And before we put the top plate on, we're just gonna go ahead and snug up the four bolts that hold the radio in. Hand tight will do just fine. Grab our mounting tray here. Grab our four small silver screws that we took out of the top of the plate. And we'll grab our two screws for each side. Go ahead and start these finger tight and then we'll tighten them down here in a minute. Let's go ahead and tidy up these wires. So we can go ahead and just push these connectors right back in their hole that they were in in the mounting plate. The navigation antenna here is not gonna be utilized with this new head unit. All of your navigation function is now gonna be handled through your phone, through Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So we can go ahead and just stick this back in here and we'll tuck the wire out of the way as there is nowhere to connect it to the back of the radio. If you selected to add or maintain your Sirius XM service at checkout, uh, this would be the time to go ahead and hook up your new XM tuner that is provided with your bundle to do that really easy located here on the back of the radio there's a little black rubber cap we're going to just pull that out and then you'll see that the plug on the series tuner will only fit in one way snap that into place we'll grab the provided antenna out of the bag that goes into place and then my recommendation is to place the Sirius antenna at the top of the fairing for right now so that it has adequate 
clearance to the sky to get the signal from the satellites. This customer has opted to not add Sirius XM, so for the rest of the purposes of this video, we're gonna go ahead and take this out and finish up the reassembly of the bike. Go ahead and reinstall our vent. So it actually has little slots here on the side and there's little tabs that we need to line up and then we can push it into place. Grab your two screws and go ahead and reattach your vent. With our vent installed, we're gonna go ahead and just tidy up all the wires, all the modules, get everything tucked away, because our next step is to reconnect the headlight and replace the outer fairing. With the inner fairing close by, we can plug our headlight back in and work our outer fairing back into place. At this point, I recommend grabbing the long bolt from the ones that we took off the windshield. And we'll go ahead and put that right there, finger tight, just so that the outer fairing stays in place. Let's grab our windshield and the two shorter screws. Let's grab our T27. All right, almost there. The only thing we have left are the four screws, two that go on each side. So I'll go ahead and turn the handlebars here and we'll get uh, both of those put back together and we'll be done with this install. With one long and one short screw, let's remember the longer screw is going to go up here, up top. Go ahead and start that and get it lined up. The shorter screw will go here at the bottom. Do the same thing on the other side. Now the time that we've all been waiting for, installation is complete. Let's do a quick walkthrough and show all of the great things that this new Soundstream HD HU.14 SI is gonna add to your Harley Davidson Street Glide. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Again, accessory power. While it's starting up, one of the great things about this radio is all of the button backlighting is actually customizable so you can do all sorts of colors. You'll see it and it's kind of its demo mode. It cycles through a bunch, but in the settings menu, you can set that to whatever your desired look is. Again, handlebar controls, everything works. Hold the volume down button. It does mute function. Cycle through our different modes, vehicle information. So see we have gear, we have battery voltage, we have a check engine light. You actually even have a compass. Uh, if your tire pressures show, if you have your brake lights on, it actually shows on the screen that your brake lights are activated. So that's pretty neat. Go back to, in the gauges screen, it shows miles per hour, your RPMs, intake temperature, uh, your twist grip percentage, that's definitely new. And again, just a different battery voltage setting there. Let's go ahead and grab a phone cord. The great thing about this too is that it does utilize your factory USB here in your cubby. So if, if you have a handlebar mount for your phone, that's gonna be great. We also have a wireless CarPlay adapter that is also available at checkout, uh, depending on whether you have an Apple phone or an Android phone, which just simply plugs into this USB. Uh, most of the time they're small enough that you can just stick them right here in the cubby so that way you don't have to have your phone out here on the handlebars possibly exposed to the weather because the other great thing about this radio is it has an IPX5 rating uh, that's a marine rating so it's the same as your Harley Davidson factory motorcycle so for guys that ride no matter what's going on outside or live in wetter climates there's nothing to be worried about if your motorcycle or more specifically your head unit gets a little wet that IPX5 rating is definitely built for the motorcycle environment. With our screen here, we'll go ahead and connect the phone. The first time that you set this up, you may have to allow it to talk to the head unit or give it access to your contacts. I've already set this up with my phone before, so it's already recognized, but you can see here on the screen that Apple CarPlay popped right up. So we have Google Maps. 
Here on the left are the last three things that you use. So there's Apple Music, phone calls. Again, if you mounted the microphone, you will be able to talk to people while you're riding your bike. We'll hit the dots here in the corner. This takes us back to the home screen of Apple CarPlay. Again, background, customizable for whatever wallpaper. You can do different colors. You can do solid colors, whatever you're choosing. But you can see all of the great apps that we have here. You have your phone, music, maps, messages, your calendar. Uh, you have different streaming apps such as your podcast. We can swipe to the side here, there's Pandora. I got three different maps here. I have Google Maps, maps.me. You can even use Waze. So all sorts of great Apple compatible or Android Auto compatible apps right here on your screen in clear view. This is gonna be a great technological upgrade to your motorcycle. Thanks for hanging out in the shop with us today. Going over a lot of great information today about the new Soundstream Reserve HD HU.14SI. This head unit bundle is gonna be applicable for any 2014 and up Harley Davidson touring motorcycle. If you'd like to pick one up for your bike, head over to the shop at www.notecycles.com.